a poet from present-day Afghanistan, one of the most eloquent Muslim poets who's ever lived, he encapsulated this Islamic character trait in a couplet. And he said, Ahsin ila nasi tastabid qulubahumu. He said, be good to people, be kind to people, and you will enslave their hearts. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Before God appointed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be his messenger to mankind, the society in which he lived in was a society where if you went out into the desert without your tribal protection, another tribe could kidnap you and sell you into slavery. They did that. This happened with a young boy whose name was Zayd, Zayd ibn Haritha, the son of Haritha. This young boy was kidnapped and he was sold as a slave. And he ended up in the hands, in the ownership of the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. Remember, this is before he became God's messenger. After he became God's messenger, he had influence, he had authority, and he forbade these kinds of things. But this is before he's God's messenger. He's living in a society where this happens. And so his wife receives a slave, a boy. His name was Zayd. The Prophet ﷺ asked her to give him to him. She did. And so Zayd ibn Haritha became the slave of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ before he's a prophet. His father discovered that he had been enslaved and that he was in the possession of Muhammad ﷺ. So he came. His father came and his father's brother, his uncle, they came to Mecca and they came to the Prophet ﷺ. They said, we'll give you anything. We'll pay you money. We want our son back. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'll give you something better. Let's just ask him. If he wants to go back to you, you can take him and you don't have to pay me anything. But if he wants to stay with me, he can stay with me. They probably thought to, to themselves, who in their right minds <laughs> would choose to remain the slave of a foreigner rather than come back to his own father and uncle. He said, great deal, let's do it. When they asked him, he said, and this is before the Prophet is God's messenger. This is how he was before he became a messenger. Zayd said that he would rather be the slave of the Prophet Muhammad rather than going back to his father and uncle. They were blown away for two reasons. The first reason, how could he choose this? The second reason is what an insult it is to them. What will people in the Arabian Peninsula say about them when they go home and everybody's going to say that they went back to get their son and their son preferred to be a slave of a foreigner than live with his own father. What an insult. The Prophet ﷺ understood that. He was sensitive to the feelings of other people. So before they went back, he made a public announcement. He said that Zayd is now a free man. He's no longer my slave. More than that, he is now my son. He is now Zayd, the son of Muhammad. I inherit from him and he inherits from me. He's like my blood son. This was also a practice that was prevalent in the ancient Arabian society before the Prophet became God's messenger. This practice of real adoption where a child becomes like your own child, even though you haven't given birth to them, there is an inheritance relationship and he's like a brother to, your, to the other daughters that you have. They can't get married to each other. They can be alone in private together. This kind of an adoption process was common in the ancient Arabian Peninsula. Later on, 
Um, this kind of adoption, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He taught the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this shouldn't happen. Um, and so we still take care of orphans, we care for them, but this kind of blood relationship cannot be initiated unless there is an actual blood relationship. The full adoption process where somebody who's not your actual son becomes a full part of your family so that he cannot marry your daughters, for example, so that inheritance relationships are established between you and him and him and the other siblings. This was something that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later on he forbade. Um, and Zayd ibn Muhammad ceased to be Zayd ibn Muhammad and he became Zayd ibn Haritha again. But all of this is cosmetic. The reality of love and kindness from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never changed. From the time when Zayd first met him before he became a Prophet, all the way down to the end. That's why when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went to the people of Ta'if to call them to Islam and they stoned him. Zayd was with him and he was shielding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his own body so that the stones would hit him and they wouldn't hit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zayd ibn Haritha, he died giving his life in battle because he loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had a son, his son's name was Usama, Usama ibn Zayd. And Usama ibn Zayd was known as the beloved the son of the beloved of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would treat him like his own grandson. He would place his own grandson, Hassan, the son of his daughter Fatima, on one of his thighs and he would place Usama, who was a baby similar in age, on his other thigh. They were both like his grandchildren. Nothing changed. But that aside, we're going to ancient Arabia before the Prophet became God's messenger. And I want you to see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did this so that Zayd's father and his uncle could go back to their people with their head raised high. Because their son had just become a prominent member of the most influential family in all of ancient Arabia. Look, there's no racism. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is turning his slave into his own son. He becomes part of the most influential family in all of ancient Arabia. The word Slave is being used as I'm telling the story, but it shouldn't be confused with this phenomenon of slavery as it existed in Christian and post-Christian modern societies. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came from the tribe of Quraysh, who were the custodians of the Kaaba, which was the holiest place, a place of pilgrimage for everyone in the Arabian Peninsula. Quraysh were venerated by everybody People would go, go out and they would be attacked. If you're from Quraysh, you were safe because they venerated these people. Now, when they went back and they told their people that their son had become a part of this tribe, it was now a source of honor. The Prophet wasallam he cared about their feelings. But what happened before? Why is it that Zayd chose to be the slave of the Prophet wasallam? rather than go back to his own parents. We're not sure of the details of what happened. Those details haven't reached us, but you can work it out. <laughs> the real beneficiary in this relationship was Zayd. And he saw that he was the real beneficiary. When the Prophet Wasallam asked Khadija for, for Zayd, he was doing it for the sake of Zayd. He was giving to Zayd. Zayd received many advantages because of his relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know later on that children used to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never say to them about something that they did and they shouldn't have done. 
why did you do that? And he never said about something that they didn't do and they should have done. Why didn't you do that? And so when he interacted with Zayd, it would have been the same thing. He wouldn't have said, don't you dare disobey me. I am your master. There's definitely no beating. There is a loving relationship where Zayd loves to be with this man who gives him his time, who talks to him. They eat together. They wear the same clothes. He's part of the family of the Prophet And when the Prophet freed him, nothing changed. Nothing changed. The relationship that existed before continued to exist after. It was just a cosmetic thing. And you know what? Zayd was still the slave of the Prophet ﷺ. Not in the physical sense. We often think of slavery as somebody overpowering another human being, controlling him, using him for his personal advantage. This is a different kind of enslavement. It's an enslavement of the heart. A couple of hundred years later, a poet from present-day Afghanistan, one of the most eloquent Muslim poets who's ever lived, this poet, Abu al-Fatih al-Busti, was inspired by this prophetic example of enslaving people's hearts through unimaginable kindness. And he was describing something that permeated Muslim society at that time. He encapsulated this Islamic character trait in a couplet. And he said, Ahsin ila nasi tastabid qulubahumu. He said, be good to people, be kind to people, and you will enslave their hearts. You will enslave their hearts. They will become your willing slaves. Because how long has it been the case, particularly since the coming of the Prophet ﷺ, because this is how he taught us to deal with people. How long has it been the case that being kind and giving and gentle with other people enslaves them? Zayd, his heart was enslaved by the Prophet ﷺ. And all of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, their hearts were enslaved by him because of the way that he treated them. They've never seen any man like this in their entire life. And they knew that they would never see anyone like this man again. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ did not follow the Prophet ﷺ because he exercised some kind of physical coercive control over them. They all came to him wanting to be his slaves, literally or figuratively. And he set them all free. He set them all free. And when he set them all free, he enslaved their hearts. And they became as though they were his slaves. They came to him willingly. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. We need your support. We want to produce over 100 videos in this series to show the beautiful character of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. This will be a positive response to all the bad things that people are saying about him. If they understood who he was, they wouldn't believe any of those accusations. If you like this video, please support this cause. You can help with as little as a dollar or even with the click of a mouse. Go to discovertheprophet.com or click the link in the description below to find out all the ways that you can help people discover who the Prophet Muhammad was. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Also to subscribe to our channel. All of this helps spread this message.